Welcome back to the Mike and Ike show and no, not the candy. It's a show with Michael Badgley and Isaac Rochelle. And you can find us on YouTube under Mike and Ike show, iTunes, Mike and Ike show, Spotify, Mike and Ike show, all the platforms, Mike and Ike show. And today we have the Chris Cyborg. Now, Isaac, let me introduce this legend from the beautiful country of Brazil, a mixed martial arts legend. Talk to him. A master of Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and wrestling a two-time female fighter of the year with 24 MMA wins and 17 by knockout. About to make her Bellator debut in January, welcome to the show, Chris Cyborg. Chris, como vai? Uh, I'm good, thank you. You know, I'm uh, my pleasure to be here. Thank you for introducing me. You know, I'm, uh, I'm excited to talk about a little bit about me. Yeah, I think it's, it's super interesting for us to be able to talk to other, like, elite athletes because we consider ourselves elite now we may not be as strong as you and as much of a beast but you know we we like to get in the mindset of people like you so thank you for being on the show you guys are beast you what you guys do is more danger than me <laughs> yeah we were just talking about it before and i mean so you think because we don't know what's coming it's more dangerous yes you some people some guys like you run with the ball and somebody coming you cannot see and it's, it's tough. It's tough. That's and true. when you're fighting, sometimes you didn't see when people punch you, but the hours you can see. It's hard, to, you know. It's Well, as a kicker, I don't think it's too dangerous for me. <laughs> but I'm, I'm definitely still yeah, out there in live out. action. But yeah. Yeah. You're just hanging out. <laughs> but, Chris, we want you to take us back to when you're in Brazil and you're a little girl. Just take us back to what it was like growing up in Brazil and then, and then becoming the fighter that you are. Um, you know, when I was a kid, I had a lot of struggles because my family, my dad, know if my mom and divorced beginning my, when I'm a kid, like one years old. Yeah. And my dad had st some struggle with alcohol and I started in sport in school and I was playing handball before. Right. And handball is not the wall ball. Everybody say, ah, is you throw the wall and the ball? No, it's handball is like Europe game. It's like oh, six, I've seen it. I've six seen it. against six. Yeah. It's very, very violent. It's very, very cool game. Very athletic. It's violent. It's yeah, you athletic can touch. too. Yeah, you can touch the people with no fault all the time. It's like different than basket, basketball. It's no joke. There's some serious moves that people put in there nice. too. Nice. Yeah. Handball. Is that the, uh, where it's just basketball with no backboard? Essentially, but there's different ways. It, you may go. You may go. Yeah. Like okay. If a hand. So that's, that's where you started, though. Yes. I started with handball, and I was doing track and field, too. And I started with 12 years old. And I was having scholarship because of handball. Yeah. I was never thinking in my mind I would like to be a fighter. Yeah. Never. <laughs> never. We, uh, you know, we did a little research. We talked to Ray. And Ray told us when you were younger, you actually didn't like to fight. No. All my, I always have a friends, troublemakers, but then when I started making problems and want to fight, street fight, I, I'm the first one to leave. And <laughs> yeah, people, where are Chris, where Chris? I always leave my friends behind. I was not like, I don't like to do anything about street fight and fight. So wow. you, I mean, you're playing handball, you're getting scholarships, you're thinking that's what you're going to do. Yes. At what point did it turn and you're like, you know what, I might just go beat some people up? <laughs> Do you know, I think it's uh, the beginning. I was never thinking I was going to beat anybody, but uh, when I was in university, I was doing education physics. And, and one guy saw me play handball. Right. Because we do a lot of games, like you guys do for warm-up. Yeah. You know, against guys, we do it all the time. And then the guys watch me play with his son. And after the game, the, the, the game like you training, he asked me, ah, I think you can be a great fighter. And then he just <laughs> giving me one card. And they say, come to my gym, you're going to like. And they look at him like, this guy crazy. And they say, no, it's okay, <laughs> like, thank I'm you. Terrified to so fight. he so he must have seen something in, in your athleticism to where it's like, she probably can do anything. Let's get her in, into a ring and see how she can fight. Yes, and then he, all the time when they see me, he's asking me, come to my gym, come to my gym. Yeah. And the final one day, I show up to the gym, have my tight trainee, and I watch a little bit and say, ah, maybe I can do that. Another day I can. Yeah, maybe I can do that. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> and then funny, I train, I think, three months. And I say, you know, I want to fight. Yeah. Because everything I do, everything before I'm a kid, like I play soccer before. I play, when people don't play basketball, we need someone, I go over there. Like I play everything in school. Yeah. And the one prayer I always have before I'm a kid, I always pray God, you know, I, I, I want to be athlete. 
I want to live my life better. It doesn't matter what sport I'm going to do. Yeah. And I always have to pray because uh, everything I was doing in school, I was good. I was good. I'm blessed about this. Yeah. And funny because when I was 19 years old, I started training my, my, my Thai. And in three months, I told my coach, you know, I want to do one fight for seal house work. But I have to do everything. I have to do the track and the running track. I have to, because I have scholarship. I have to keep study. I have to do handball. I cannot miss the class. And I put Muay Thai. She and does it all. Everything. I was doing everything for, for <laughs> no miss. And then, you know, I told him, you know, I want to do one Muay Thai fight. And then I think he looking for, and then I think maybe, I think two weeks, three weeks, he came talk to me, you know, Chris, we got a fight for you, but have a problem. It's no Muay Thai. It's MMA. Oh, okay. And, and, and we begin. And, we, <laughs> and we begin. And then he said, you know, it's you just have to train a couple things and then you're gonna be okay. I feel okay. I wow. trained six months, I did my first fight, professional, but you usually you do amateur right. for you be professional. I first the first fight I did uh, professional, I fight one girl, I lost that fight. I dislocated my elbow the fight. Because in Brazil we have oh. some event. Like you can jump in the head when yeah. people on the floor. You okay. can kick in the head, like penalty. Oh my gosh. Some events. <laughs> and this event I fought. And then when I jump, I try jump, she, I fall down and then I dislocate my elbow and I finished the fight I lost because I cannot continue. And I say, you know, I born for this. Yes. Wait, I'm, so wait, you yes. could, people could jump on your head. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and kick your head. Just freestyle. Freestyle. By any means necessary. <laughs> freestyle, crazy. I didn't know what I was going through either. I mean, you know, You know teenagers. Teenagers you start to go, I know, I'm go. No, I'm not scared, I'm afraid, I'm go. Yeah, right, I'm a beast. So and then I go over there and I say, you know, and I dislocated my elbow. The guy in the, when I come back after the fight, then put him back in the same time. Wow. I'm back to the cage. And <laughs> I ask, imagine uh, us? I ask for like rematch. Coach. As for rematch, the lady, I never got the rematch, but you know, she's. I start training, and you know, I love this. I stopped doing handball, I stopped doing other sports, and they just doing mixed martial arts. I mean, wow. that, that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, you think you think you get thrown right into a professional fight, like you said, you skipped amateur, right? You went right into it, dislocate your elbow, end up losing the fight, but you continued to say, "Yeah, I want to do this." Well, don't and don't sleep on the fact that she's an elite handball player at the same time. <laughs> it's like, that's not even really what you yeah. do. And it's like, all right, let's see what you can do, Chris. So you you get in there, you dominate, you're a beast, dislocate the elbow, doesn't matter. What does it look like moving forward then for you? Because you said at that point, you're kind of like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. What did it look like moving forward after you realized you were great at fighting? No, the beginning, of my family don't accept and my yeah, mom would yeah. say, ah, I don't put you in the best school for you can do punches. Because before people see this is mean thing. It's yeah. like, no, something you professional. Yeah. You yeah. know, and my mom don't have the vision. It's professional. You can be working doing this. Yeah. And the beginning, my mom don't agree. And, but I continue doing. She didn't know. Sometimes I have black eyes. I say, ah, from handball. <laughs> and, you know, all the time I have a new excuse for her. And when, I, when she starts to see it's like a job. Yeah. Like you can work, you can train. Me. And then she's starting to accept a little bit. And now she's accepted, but she doesn't like to watch you watching. Oh, that's classic. You know, it's like, it doesn't matter what age you are. Your mom doesn't, I mean, my mom still gets scared watching me play football. Because it we still kid forever. We no kid doubt. forever. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy, though. The whole, the whole story, though, the fact that you just kind of ended up in this is crazy to me. And it's, it's funny because it seems like a lot of professional athletes, Badge will probably agree with me, we kind of find ourselves in these professional places. Like, you were just an athlete and then ended up a fighter. And I, I want to I go back to something real quick. You said that um, you used to pray, you know, like, I want to be prof a professional athlete, whatever it may be. Is faith a huge part of what you do now and back then? Was it a huge part? You know, before I was no very strong Christian, but, you know, I have my prayers, you know, I went to church. And, but I always have to pray funny because the long time after, you know, I, I just remember I always pray, you know, God, I want to work, be at least because I love this job. And I think doing this is going to be happy. And doesn't matter what sport, you know, I told him, you can choose. And funny, I was 19, somebody find me and say, you know, we can be a great fighter. And I did my first fight. I fight a couple of times in Brazil, maybe 10 times. And I had the opportunity to fight in America, 2008. And I came here and said, man, this is amazing. 
is is people appreciate my job and want yeah. to sponsor me and want it's a job yeah they're like this girl's a beast yeah i mean it's and then so when you first got to america you start fighting and what you know kind of where did it start when you got here to the u.s you know i did my first fight in miami i think uh i found an event the name is ellie Chexi. and i did my first fight and they said man this is amazing i want to move to america yeah, <laughs> yeah of course you're in miami I, know, like, yeah, right. I said because these people like my job it's not like brazil brazil i trained one gym before in the beginning of my career like i'm the peer and as the girls like i think i have 40 guys 50 guys only me the girl wow yeah well you're beating them all up though and then it's very hard <laughs> too because sometimes when you train some gym the guys think you're gonna find want to find a boyfriend you don't want to find i was no one there for that yeah. you know i was there for training but it's 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 hard all the time because it, you the guys start to want to flirt to you and then you go there for fox for training sometimes you have you people beat you and then they're more strong than you but you have you know sometimes a lot of times i cry after training and you know but next day another day and wow. some and it's hard it's really hard and i enjoy training for guys you know different girls i yeah. think the girls very emotion the yeah. guys i like more training the guys but it's the beginning it's hard then strong to you and then it's hard no doubt um, so you're, you're in Miami and you're feeling like, all right, this is a little bit better for me because of that. Um, what was it like though, being here and representing, I mean, you're from Brazil, kind of representing Brazil coming here and being in fights. The beginning when I came, I don't speak any English. I, I just say colors and maybe numbers It's very wow. hard for me. And, but you know, I have a dream. I have a dream for help my family. I have a dream uh, use the platform, the place I'm fighting for, share my faith, and give motivate the, the people in Brazil. Then can be where I'm at because if I get in my dream, then can get it too. Yeah. Just have discipline and keep work hard. It's not gonna be easy, you know. And I always have my mind. The life is like running. Sometimes it's gonna be hard, but you have to go slow. Yeah. You go up here, you have to go slow, but you need going. Yeah. And, and then we should, and then this is like motivating every day every time i see my fans and then say i, I want to be a fighter the same one kid you see them dress up like a fighter and this motivates me because give you hope for them you know i never think in my life i was going to meet a lot of countries that i went yeah. to seminars or be famous i never think about this in my life i don't have this dream in my heart right and and this is happening you just give you hope for them they can do the same thing you know, this in the sport, anything you're doing, you know, not just me a, be a fighter, but right. another sport, you can change life with your family, you know, you can change everything you do. But you, I, I think the sport can change everything, you know, in favelas in Brazil or in any place like you need help. Wow. I mean, Chris, you've got some really, really good insight. And, and how true is that? It's like we, we all have the opportunity because we're all professional athletes. What we do, we have the opportunity to change our life, one. I mean, you have this beautiful gym. You're living in Huntington Beach, living the dream. But we have the opportunity to influence so many people with this yes, platform. True. And so I down. think, I mean, it's crazy. And yeah. I think it's so cool that you realize that. Yes, you have to. I think like this, a lot of people don't do that. But I think when you have the bless, I think you have the bless for bless someone. You can only leave the blessing on you because why are you gonna bless you if you're not blessing anybody? Right. It doesn't matter. No about money, but about to shake your hand, about to say one word nice, motivate someone. And I try to do this. I try to do this all the time where I'm going. Like any any fan fans stop me, I always talk to them, take your time because they make you famous. Right. Some people forget about this. That's yeah, super true. Again. Well, the fans will turn on you too sometimes. <laughs> yeah. You know that. Then do, then do. Then sometimes with you, sometimes not with you. But you know, my fans are strong fans. They do a lot of things in my career. Like my first fight in UFC, they make campaign for me to be there. You know, my make my division because I don't have before. They make campaign for that. I think my fans help a lot of me. You know, my everything happened in my career. I'm very blessed. Thank you. For it is. I mean, you've, your career has been a blessing. It's been fun to watch. <laughs> She's yeah. unreal. Thank you. So we're kind of segueing, you know, all over your Instagram and other social media platforms. You're seen wearing positive energy apparel. Now, we, Isaac and I are big believers in always having positive energy. But can you kind of talk about that? Tell us about this whole positive energy lifestyle is that just something you believe in and you try to tell yourself every day or how does that work you know every day you have a f f not just fight in the cage but the battle fight in your brain you know okay. like every time okay i wake up in the morning i'm tired 
And then you have to fight this. Uh, I'm not perfect. I'm not waking up in the morning every day. Ah, okay, I'm excited. Yeah. You know, it's a job. You have to wake up every day. Okay, let's run, 6 a.m. Yeah. You know, like every time. But you need to change, you know. It's like if you have to change what you think because with everything you think, you're going to make an emotion. Yeah. And then if you think bad, negative, you're going to have a negative emotion. And it, this is a fight inside you. Everybody have this fight. Every but day. we have to beat them. So true. You know, have to beat them. It, 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 no, sometimes I'm tired. You know, I'm in 30, 40 years old. This is no semi when I was 19. Yeah. And I know I woke up, man, my body sore. But, you know, it's it's my dream. I live the dream. And the people want to see me fight, want to do things for them. And, you know, you have to find the motivate every day. And I try to share this you know, in my, my platforms. I it's love in, it. It's incredible. I mean, Chris is about to have me fired up. I'm ready <laughs> to run through a brick wall it's already. It's so true. <laughs> um, we want to transition a little bit into this, this mentality that you have to have when you fight. Because you have been overwhelmingly positive. You have great vibes, great energy. But at some point, Chris Cyborg flips the switch. <laughs> yes. And you have to have. You have to have a killer mentality. You're probably about to say that. I'm sorry for interrupting. But. At some point in a fight, and I've know it because the the sport is such an art to me because I've watched it over the years, and it's just I see it as such an art because you have to know all these different moves. But at some point in the fight, you are over that other fighter, mm -hmm. and you have to almost essentially try and kill them. <laughs> you know, it's survive, right? Like you dare to grow and kill me and kill her. It's not the kill; it's just you know, it's you have to beat her or beat you, right? And then have one. Play we do in Brazil, better her mother cry than my mind cry. <laughs> <laughs> mother right cry. In Brazil, <laughs> I always play it. this like better her mother cry than my cry. You know, it's I see like a job. I never hate the girl I fight. Like I think when you have anger, somebody you fight, you do mistakes. Yeah. Because you use the emotion and do mistake. This has happened in my career already. You can you cannot have emotion in the fight. You have to train and if, you know do what you train. But that that you have to beat, you know. It's the one game somebody have to lose, and just two person, right. and you just go over there and do your best you can. I mean, I just can't even imagine the mentality you have because you know I am not much of a fighter. I'd love to be. Well, we just, know that. Yeah, we know that. I just can't do it. But I'll I'll talk a big game. Um, but when you knock somebody down and you know that they're probably out cold at this point, and you still have to go run over to them and bury them without the ref pulling you off until he's got to do it. Right. I can't even imagine that feeling of I got to go finish this person still, even though I already know they're knocked out cold. Um, you know, sometimes after they punch you, yeah, you're not gonna have the same feeling. <laughs> yeah, right. You just try to <laughs> knock me out. I'm That's gonna true. knock you out. Yeah, That's so true. It's just so interesting though because it's it's the same with us. Like our coaches tell us, you don't all the rah rah hype, all the music, all that that goes away. At some point, you have to do your job. Yeah, and it's so interesting listening to you because you're professional at what you do and you're elite and you're going into fight saying I have to do my job which is to essentially knock you out how much of uh just like game planning and understanding your opponent goes into doing your job and beating them usually we always study on my opponents you watch all her fights watch everything she does what yeah. she do the best what she what not she do the eats, best drinks sleeps. yes everything <laughs> some people look this you know i usually don't like to look at what my opponent does but my team does yeah you know, have someone for see what she training have someone to do her interviews have everybody doing Jeez. and they just send me this the, the black book for yeah, me awesome. and then we make one game plan for the fight of course you can have it maybe two or three, but sometimes the plan not works. Yeah. But you have to change. You have to switch the time, you know, in the fight. Right. And because you have to prepare for everything happen because we didn't know. Yeah. Sometimes you have one plan, it doesn't work. You need to say, you know, let plan B. Yeah. And you have to be prepared for everything. Like, yeah. Wow. It, it's just so interesting. And now it's easy. No easy. But now we have YouTube, you have media, you can so watch much. the fights. You can watch before people fight before me. They cannot see the opponent. Yeah. Okay, you're going to fight for the guy. You don't know anything. You just say, oh, you know, it's never hard to kick, but <laughs> you don't know what the guy does. You know, it's hard. Well, let me ask you this, because I'm curious, because you talked about, again, going back to this idea of you're just trying to do your job. Do you think that some of these fighters that are so into the social media scene and so into acting like they hate their opponent, do you think some of that is just for, like, show? Or do you think they actually hate their opponent? No, I think is some people maybe hate each other, but I think it's most for sell. Yeah. You know, I think the the fam, the fans like to see 
the, the, the something like ah, we talk about and talk like the bad crap talks. You yeah, know, yeah. I usually don't like talking anything about the opponents. Sometimes the reporters want you talk. Oh, Sometimes no they put start they start try to bait you into yeah, it. and yeah. I tell me you're not gonna get it you're not gonna get it but you know it take help for for sell the event you know like for sell yeah. the fight yeah well there's some there's some characters in the in yeah, the, uh, in the fighting world but uh we have a we have a question for you because this is an ongoing debate in NFL locker rooms and yes. me and badge were kind of joking about it before now answer answer it truthfully too you don't have to be nice yeah okay. so we know for a fact if you fought badge you would beat him up yeah, you'd kick my ass, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah. Uh -huh. But we always joke around. Do you think that you could come in our locker room against big NFL players and beat us up? Because I'd like to think now that I've met you and I feel the demeanor that you would. You know, one thing I have to do, I have to be in space. Okay. For me, can maybe punch and run. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because... You guys very heavy than me, you know, yeah, like yeah. Yeah, maybe if I can punch and run, punch and run, maybe. Yeah. But I don't know. It's going to be a tough fight. Because tough I'm, fight. Always, I'm always just so curious because how much do you think the weight class is, which they created a whole weight class for you because you're a beast. But <laughs> how much do you think the weight classes play into it? Like, do you think you could go into a heavier weight class and dominate like you do in the weight class that you're in? Uh, you know, I think in 145, for 145 for me, is really hard to make. Now I'm in 170. Yeah. And I have to cut a lot of weights for 145. Um, I think the heavier, I was going to have to be, make the same plan. Yeah. It's punch and move, punch and move. I think you're going to be faster. Yeah. The people have it in you. I don't think, maybe I'm going to put a little more weight, but I don't think I'm going to put a lot. Yeah. Because it's the, my body usually fight. Yeah. You know, some people say, ah, let's put a lot of weight and they're going to be slow. And they're going to be retired fast. You don't have to have a big plan. So, I mean, that kind of goes into another, because I'm also su super curious about this. When you have to cut weight, what is that process like? Because I've seen just even wrestlers and all these fighters go th like through it and they show up to their weigh-in days and they just look totally just everything Shredded. drained out of their yeah. body. No, usually I try to lose everything in the camp first and I usually lose like 12 if I'm good. If I'm good, yeah. maybe 12 pounds of water. Okay. But I lost a weight at 25 in oh three my days. Gosh. You lost 25 pounds in three water. days. Water. Water. But it's no health. It's bad. Somebody home, don't do that. It's very <laughs> bad for your body. Don't try this at all. Don't home. try this. But, you know, it's um, some girls are difficult too. You guys, you stop eating anything, eat a little bit. You guys lose weight, like, I don't know, seven pounds a week. Girls yeah. is hard. And when you have the end of the month, it's the worst. You know, hold <laughs> more water and the, the girls are more hard. I think because, as I say, I think the girls' division is supposed to have more divisions because this, because we have a hard time to lose. If you work the same way, you're going to lose more weight than me. You know, it's, it's, it's like this. But usually we, I lose like 12 pounds a week. Uh, in the week, the fight. Um, I drink a lot of water in my camp. I drink like two liter, two gallons and a half, two gallons. I mean, a day? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but easy. In the beginning, it's hard. But after you drink like normal, you can sit down and drink one gallon, sit down. Because your body already get it. Because when you drink water, your body not going to hold the water. Yeah. And we do one trick. And then we can fight. We drink, drink, drink a lot of water. And then you stop. Yeah. But you're going to continue go pee. So what is that? What happens after you lose all that weight? You weigh in, and then do you just go back to? Do you want to be heavy for the fight then, or what does that look like after? I would you like? I want to be the getting back the twelve pounds I lost. Okay. Because the, I want to put the water back. They would they, they because you stay the way to before you know because they usually the the weight I'm training. Yeah. Like before before the camp, so I just want to put the water back. It's the most important to lose weight is to put the weight back. You know, sure. like the water. The first two hours, I drink more water. Water, pedialytes, um, electrolytes, sodium, because you stay whole one week in those sodiums. Because if you take sodium, your body hold the water. Yeah. And we put a lot of clothes, sweat. You yeah. will stay like 20 hours, not drink anything. You just train the sweat. Oh, my gosh. It's the word. It's, it's, it's crazy. And the day you have to sleep, you cannot sleep because it's so dry. And... But you know, it's the first battle is the make weight for yeah. me. But you know, and 
But then after you make weight, it's a party. Go fight. You yeah. know, eat. Yeah, right. Drink. Let's go. I'm sure your body, though, when you've lost all that weight, you are, I mean, do you even have energy? I would think your body would be so hungry for substance and water and to get back to your normal weight that you wouldn't even feel good. Sometimes, no. Sometimes you feel like you're going to pass out because no sodium. And, but you know, but I have the whole team with me. They always more like corner. They stay in corner and tell me, motivate me. And, and then, you know, it's, it's like a job. Your yeah. first job is make weight. Right. You yeah. know, it's sometimes hard. Some people don't make weight. I, I did in my, my career too. Uh, but the first thing in your job is to make weight. And the after the second is, you know, the fight. And it's hard, but you know, it's your body started working already. You know, I'm doing this so long and you learn every camp, you learn more and more. Then we're getting better. I, uh, my diet is getting better. You know, I learned everything about my body and you know how to do. Well, I'm sure it's the same for us as we <laughs> progress in our careers. We learn so much more yes. about recovery, taking care of the body. Do you feel like you've made a huge jump from when you were 19 and you were playing handball, just getting into fighting to now just from a recovery standpoint? No, for sure. Before, like, okay, I think maybe in some fights in the beginning of my career, I make way, I didn't die to, okay, eat just apple. Yeah. You know, now, no, I eat every three hours. You can eat a little bit every three hours. The battery metabolic can be getting fast. You're not going to lose weight, no eat anything. Right. You learn a lot of things. Okay, drink water. You have to drink a lot of water because your body not going to hold the water. In the week of the fight, no sodium because your body going to hold the water. Like, okay, after you make weight, you cannot just go buy one pizza because you're hungry, you know? <laughs> you have to drink a little bit slow too, and the first thing is liquid. Like, it's a lot of things you learn, you learn in the year. It's experience. Yeah. And then how, how important is it to have a good team behind you? It's very important to have a team, you know, behind you. Some people, it's lucky because have people can teach you the beginning of your career, I have some people too in the beginning of my career, but they didn't know too much about cut weight. Don't know what, you know, a lot of things. And and I, I now I have one thing. I'm growing in process. I got I learn a lot, and I have a lot of people in my team. They already learn about me too, like my system. My body system then work better with good fat. When I eat, if I eat one pasta, big plate of pasta, not gonna help me if I eat if I eat avocado. You know, have some bodies. The bodies is different and. Take a little while for me to learn that. But, yeah. you know, now you know it's, it's better. And then he asked you about the team. During the fight, though, how important is the team? Because you're getting, I mean, you're having cuts. You're having different type of injuries. In fact, we, we did a little research. Your last fight, you got a really bad cut. Now, you totally dominated the whole fight. Um, but how does your team help you with that? And then how do you deal with that? when you have a huge injury like that? You know, the first, the beginning of the fight, the cut, I didn't know I was did it here. I was thinking my nose. Yeah. And then when they had get blood, I was thinking my nose got out blood. And and then I didn't think too much about it, but you know, I don't want to stop the fight. And I want to do the cut again. <laughs> <I'm hurt. Yeah. laughs> and, but you know, but then my coach say, ah, Chris, you okay, you okay, calm down. You know, I think it's important the coach because they know who, they know you. Yeah. You know, they know how's you, how do you work at the, at, the, at, the, at the training, the gym? Because you're not going to do the different in the, in the cage inside the octagon. You're going to do the same. If you yeah. do something in the gym, you're going to do it in the fight. And they just say, man, come down, only relax and keep doing the, you know, your project. Just happen to cut, but, you know, keep going. Or Yeah. So, you know, especially with an injury like that, do you even, without, just, you saw it clearly because of the blood coming down your face. But would you do you even notice that cut, or do you feel it the next morning, or do you do you just keep fighting? No. First thing, I saw the blood get out. I don't know if the nose under my front head. I didn't know, and I didn't ask my coach either because my the last fight my friend had his fight and his cut very bad, <laughs> and he asked for his coach, ah, how's my cut? And they say, ah, it's okay, it's okay, but it's big. I said, I'm gonna ask <laughs> because they're gonna tell me it's good. Yeah, right. They didn't yeah. ask anything. I just continue fight. And after the fight, I was showering, and they, they bring me to the place I was at. And the first thing I asked the guy, you just can put the glue? And they say, no, I can see your bones. <laughs> oh, oh my god! I know, it's bad. And then <laughs> he did a stitch, and they told him, careful, do a stitch nice. I know the biggest scar shoes in my face. <laughs> and you know, girls, I was at the care, care this. And then okay, I cut the heat and cut the nose a little bit too. And, but it's okay, it's, it's part of the job. What is the recovery like after a fight? Because for us, I mean, after, well, again, maybe not for Badge because he's kicking, but 
for me, like, my body is so beat up after games. I can only imagine how you would feel after a fight. How long do you just chill and do nothing after a fight? You know, the beginning of my career, I was fight. I, okay, I stay two days off and go training. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. But it's really special rest. Yeah. Like, uh, we learn it. You know, we learn the special rest. Your need, your body need the rest. You know, we have the we go slow, low, go pick, and they go down. We have to have this, and you know, usually I love to run. I run. I train. Sometimes after the fight, I go see my family in Brazil. I come back by hours. Stay try to stay in shape. You know, I eat some things I like to eat, but running and do you can train it technical too. You know, just need it just. Strong, 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 but you can do some technical learning, technical jiu-jitsu, getting better, you know, uh, wrestling. And, but usually I usually like take like two weeks, one month, but I always run and do something. I know yeah. just to stay off. And then you talked about jiu-jitsu. Badge had a, a question about how long it takes or how long it took you to get to a black belt, right? I'm a brown belt. Yeah. Brown it's belt in jiu-jitsu. Oh. Yes. How long did that take? Uh, I start, you know, I, I, I did it. I went to, I get in my white belt and I compete jiu -jitsu, jiu jitsu. And then I win and I got my black belt, my blue belt. And then I compete jiu jitsu. And then I won my purple belt and I compete and I get in my brown belt. Um, I like to compete because when you compete jiu jitsu, you learn a lot. You know, and they don't have the opportunity to, to do this because jiu jitsu, if you hurt, you, I'm out of the MMA. That's and true. the most money I make is the MMA. Yeah. Jiu Jitsu gets just get the medal. You know, I have my I have two medals for the uh, uh, the um, the world in in purple belt, and I won. I have the two medals, but I go home, drive to San Diego, cry because I was gonna walk. My knee hurts. <laughs> I hurt my knee. You know, it's 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 harder when you have an MMA fight, a contract MMA, and you compete Jiu Jitsu. You know, I think I would like to compete in brown belt because I never did. Yeah. And for maybe for me growing up as a fighter and getting better, improving my game, and you know, for maybe one day be a black belt. But you know, some people, if you do just Jiu Jitsu, I know one guy very good. Maybe I can bring him the podcast for you guys. Kenage, he's very he's young. Used. He's getting his belt in five years. Five years, get his black Is belt. Is that super fast? Super fast. Okay. <laughs> but he's, he's, he's best. He's very good. And his dad is very good, too. His dad is best, too. But he's training five years to get a black belt. But he do jiu-jitsu whole day. What was all his day. name again? Kenage. Shout out to Kenage. Yes, yeah, shout out for Kenage. <laughs> yes. So you just made a huge change in your career. You switched from UFC to Bellator. What's been the biggest difference so far? Uh, you know, UFC, I have a nice time there. You know, I think like the chapter there, like this history there, the end. Yeah. You know, and now it's the next chapter in my career. And I'm really happy. You know, I continue doing this. The f number one thing, you know, I, would I want the belt, the Bellator. I think I want to be the only fighter, female fighter, have the four different title belts, different events. Yeah. And this is my goal. Yeah, to be happy. You know, I'm really happy. This is the difference. I work happy. I uh, mean, my boss, we, we work together. It's really nice. It's not just I have a boss, but we partnership. This is yeah. very good. It's an exciting time. I mean, you got your first fight coming up against Julia Budd. Yes. I was coming in January. I mean, what are, what are we thinking here? You know, Julia, I respect her. She's a longtime champion, and she's she's trained really hard. I'm training really hard for her. I, you know, I think it's going to be the real five more forty five, because you know, usually my last fights I did when girls dro drop down weight, and they're going to be great fight. I'm very excited for this opportunity. I'm excited too. It's going to yes. be fun. Nice, you guys can go because the guys live close. Where is it at? They're going to be in LA. Oh yeah, at the forum. Got to go. Yes, you got to oh, go. The forum's going to be yeah. such a fun place to fight yes have you fought there before no nah, i'm not sure the form is going to be unreal and then you know i have a surprise i have my clothes it's going to be the colors the lakers oh yes <laughs> the yellow and the purple it's going to be, be good. clean so yes. it's it's funny you brought up clothes i want to ask you a quick little fun fact I, I mean ray hooked it up with a lot of good information so your mom is big in making clothes right dresses specifically yeah she sell fabrics but she have own lady she does, and then when she have some ideas, she does this when I was kid. Oh, but so she your say, whole life. And then she say, I did it for me when I'm kid. Yeah. And then when I teenager, no way I'm going to put the dress she making for me <laughs> because, you know, teenagers. Yeah. And then now you're getting older, say, okay. And then, yeah, you back know, at it. back it up. <laughs> and then and she's having fun. She makes some dress for me and... And then she, because she already have the fabric and every, every fight I have a new dress for my mom. Oh, that's great. Nice. 
That's awesome. Yeah, yes. that's great. Um, and then just, you know, just to close it out a little bit, you've, you've brought unreal energy to this, by the way. And I think yeah, you, you. you've given us insight that we can take and use in our careers. And it's always fun for us to interview people because we feel like we learn something new from everybody. Nice. Um, what is next, though, for Chris Cyborg? You, like I said, you made some big changes. And like you said, you're super excited about it. I think all your fans are really excited about it. But what does the future look like for you and what are your goals? You mentioned it a little bit, but just to reiterate a little bit about some of your goals now starting in Bellator. No, my goals first is get that belt, you right. know, and be the champion Bellator and continue share my faith, my platform and try to help people who most I can, you know, and and then maybe after, you know, and then I get everything I want to make and in the, in the Bellator and touch a lot of things, be the le- continue to be the legend and open the eyes of people, open the opportunities in Brazil and then other kids can be a fighter too. And, you know, make one family and they continue to work with the girls. I have the camp here in my, you know, all the time, Pink Bell Fitness. Yeah. Use this for a show a little bit of self-defense. Uh, we teach you about how you can eat better, how you can lose weight, how you can make friends. Because everybody now, it's only social media, only a cell phone. You don't make friends. Right. And we make the pink belts for you. Can I can share my experience too. I can meet young girls and share the how to be a fighter. And I continue want to do this, you know, share my experience. Maybe for two and I do my book. Talk about a little bit and help people a lot of, a lot of places in the world. She does it all. Hmm. I'm, I mean, I'm extremely motivated. But, I, have, I you know, I got one more question. Talk to him, Badge. And it's kind of, it's more of a business question, sort of, to see, you know, I'm just curious. So in Bellator, one of my favorite fighters to watch is Michael Venom Page. That guy's so fun, he's entertaining. And I've always said I want to see him fight someone in the UFC. Could you, being in the Bellator, could you ever see like a cross-promotional event happening where Bellator fights against the UFC? You know, this is one dream I too. Let's see. Oh, you know, I, I love oh. it. I love it. You know, I did a shout out. If I ask for a Scott, if you one day have the opportunity for a fight from Amanda Nunes, we get in my rematch. I told him I would like to do it. And they say, man, I mean. And then I say, just then why text the Scott and for make this fight happen. And I think it's nice. If he doesn't have the opportunity, Scott say he's able to do that. He's doing this already for the Rising in Japan. Yep. Some event he's sending people over there and he say, I'm okay. Wow. If it does happen, it's going to be really cool. Yeah, I think oh, it, it would be it, awesome too. Yes. I think it'd just be big for the sport too. Yes. That's that nice. Be really big. And I know, and you're, you're locked in on Julia Budd, but who is your dream fight? Whether it's someone who fought in the past or, you know, someone still fighting right now, who is your dream fight? Uh, the first before I would like my rematch, my first fight. Okay, lost, but I never have the opportunity. And I met the girl. We just make start be friends, and you know what? Maybe she happens cool, and you know in the past I allowed to live in the past. Maybe rematch if I'm on, if I have the opportunity. If you know BFC, may I have so much years. Maybe she get out of FC. Maybe we meet sometime, and but you know, no, I always keep in my way and see what the destiny is bringing me. I like it. That's I love the way it. way it should be. Chris Cyborg, beautiful inside and out. Also happens to be the best female fighter in the world. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, thank you so much. This was awesome. Uh, thank you, guys. I wish the best. You continue doing this and, you know, share. Meet a lot of athletes and share a little bit, learn. And I wish you good luck for both. God oh, bless. Uh, we're excited and good luck in January. Yes. Thank you. They're going to win. You. you don't need the luck. <laughs>